have a presentation, please. We'll call the meeting to order and uh, uh, we request you to present your budget for 2018. Uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, DICT is uh, appearing before you this morning uh, to present its uh, budget for 2018. And uh, we appreciate the fact that even if it is a Friday, you took time, you took pains at uh, entertaining us. Thank you so much for that. Our, uh, we work on Friday, Secretary, just not in the Senate. Okay. But it's the employees who have to come here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you thank them, actually, for okay, coming. Okay. Come here. Okay, okay. And uh, we come here in obedience to uh, the constitutional principle that between the three departments of government. This is uh, part of the principle of checks and balances. And uh, because Congress prepares the force, while uh, we are the one who execute uh, uh, what is commanded for by laws. And uh, on this occasion, we are uh, going to present uh, our uh, budget for 2018. So we will let uh, uh, Moni Ibrahim to uh, present our budget. Thank you so much. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, we are pleased to actually present to you the uh, 2018 proposed budget of uh, the DICT family. Uh, this is going to be the outline. Uh, uh, first, we'll actually uh, put uh, some context on the on the on the, the presentation, uh, the mandate, and uh, where we where the Philippines is right now in terms of uh, 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 its adoption. Uh, of uh, digital technologies, and after that, uh, we'll run you through uh, what this uh, the mandate, our major accomplishments, and uh, also uh, present uh, what is uh, the different tax agencies of uh, the ICT, and finally pr uh, present to you the proposed uh, uh, 2018 uh, budget of uh, the whole DICT family. Uh, in terms of ranking, uh, we're very, very pleased to uh, inform you that the uh, Philippines has maintained its uh, uh, number one ranking in terms of uh, voice-based uh, BPO services, uh, which we now call the IT BP, uh, the BPM services. And uh, we also maintained and uh, has actually significantly uh, closed the gap between uh, us and India in terms of uh, the non-voice uh, IT services. Um, <coughs> and in the 2018, there uh, was this uh, ranking of uh, the Tolan's uh, top 50 digital nations. Philippines actually came in third next to India and uh, China. This is in terms of uh, adoption of forces of digital technologies as well as uh, uh, the ICT industry uh, was this, uh, sector as well. And uh, we're also pleased to inform you that uh, uh, in the 2017 ranking, five Philippine cities are uh, uh, included in top 100 uh, outsourcing destination in the world, uh, with Manila coming in number two to New Delhi. Uh, they have actually just rebranded this ranking into the super cities uh, which is, uh, ranking. Um, however, uh, we, uh, in 2016, uh, we actually had uh, 10 Philippine cities in the top 100 uh, for 2017. Uh, we only have five Philippine cities, primarily because the, the uh, tolerance actually changed uh, some of the parameters in the ranking, which now focuses on the digital transformation of the cities, okay, the use of ICT in these cities, as well as uh, uh, the startup, digital startup ecosystem in the cities, which were not actually present during the uh, 2016 uh, uh, ranking. What are the other four cities, aside from Manila? Uh, well, we have uh, this, uh, Santa Rosa, Davao, Bacolod, Cebu. Yeah. So what's not to uh, delay the presentation? Can you just give us a copy of that? Uh, yeah, we have a survey. Yeah, yeah, okay. <coughs> 
And uh, in terms of uh, which is the Global E-Government uh, Development Index, uh, we actually moved from number 78 uh, in 2014, which was the last prior to this, uh, uh, the, the, the 2016 ranking, to 71st uh, in, uh, uh, in, in uh, 2016. Uh, and the a two areas where we significantly improved on is uh, are actually telecommunications infrastructure by 54.67 percent, and online services uh, by almost 40 uh, percent. And in terms of the global in uh, innovation index, okay, we also uh, improved by one slot uh, from uh, the 2016 uh, was this uh, uh, ranking, and uh, I think uh, we believe that uh, was this. Uh, uh, rather, we've seen that uh, was this the, the, the improvement uh, uh, significantly uh, was this primary mandate is basically uh, to be the primary policy planning, coordinating, implementing an administrative entity of the executive branch uh, of the government that will plan, develop and promote national ICT development agenda. Our vision is to uh, be able to achieve an innovative, safe, and happy nation that thrives through and is enabled by ICT. Our missions uh, are the following. Uh, we commit to provide every Filipino access to vital ICT infra infrastructure and services. Ensure sustainable growth of the Philippine ICT-enabled industries, resulting to creation of more jobs, especially in the countryside. Establish a one digitized government, one nation. Support the administration's uh, the, uh, fully support the administration to assist in the achievement of its goals. And finally, to be an, to become an enabler, innovator, uh, innovator achiever and leader in, the, in pushing the country's development and transition towards a world-class digital economy. We aim to be the ICT of the people, the ICT for the people. Our priority trust, okay, uh, number one, policy, planning, and international local linkages, that's under USEC, uh, Dennis Villorente. Industry and countries before you go to your trust, mm -hmm. that's a mission. Sana pwede niyong ilagay affordable access. Because uh, even if there's access, theoretically, but if it's not affordable, then really it's not, it's not genuine access. Not at this, uh, Mr. Chair. So the, the, the six priority trusts of the department are the following. Policy, planning, international, local, and local linkages, that's under uh, USEC Villorente. Industry and countryside development, that's actually under my portfolio. Resource sharing and capacity building, that's under uh, the portfolio of USEC Villorente. Improved public access and consumer protection and cybersecurity policy and program coordination, that's under USEC uh, Rio. And support services, that's actually under my uh, uh, portfolio. Now, uh, public access is under you? Uh, or no, no, uh, USEC Rio. USEC Rio, yeah. okay. So the status of uh, our institutional build-up, uh, we, uh, the, the, the implementing rules and regulations of uh, RA 10844 was actually signed uh, October 17 of last year. Uh, approved appointments of uh, three undersecretaries and four assistant secretaries. Our <coughs> organizational structure and staffing pattern was finally approved in June 21st uh, this year, uh, with only 800 positions of the uh, requested 2,027 uh, positions. Okay. And, uh, and just to add to this, uh, of the 17 regional offices that we requested, only eight regional offices were approved by DBM. Issuance of notice of organization, uh, staffing, and compensation, or the NOSCA, uh, was only received uh, July 21st of this year for the 731 plantilla positions. Even up, uh, up to now, we have not received the approval of the 40 or 49 um, uh, uh, third level positions. So th this is actually for director up, which is still pending with the office of the president. Uh, 
Yeah. Wala kayong mga... <laughs> wala, kayo, wala, wala kami <laughs> nagtitinta ng coffee ngayon. <laughs> Ang director nagda-drive din. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, anyway, uh, how many of the 731 are filled uh, currently? Uh, we are just... Uh, ito na yun, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay, so we've right after we received the approvals, uh, the June and July, the NOSCA, okay, uh, we created the placement committee and uh, we now have... Uh, we approved the placement guidelines. And uh, the, for those uh, the potential uh, affected doses of personnel, which is actually going to be about almost 80% of the current doses, uh, uh, manpower complement of doses of uh, the department, kasi tinanggal, Mr. Chair, ng DBM yung salary grade below, which is uh, nadudun karamihan ng mga empleyado namin. Okay. Uh, salary grade uh, 7 and below. Tinanggal nila lahat. What's the reason for that? Uh, the reason that, that was given to us is because uh, we're a technology, a technical uh, uh, agency. Uh, we need to actually, uh, to, uh, we need more technical people, people uh, uh, because currently we, mas uh, marami administrative offices, uh, uh, personal namin kaysa yung technical. So, uh, ang binigay nila sa aming uh, uh, ratio is uh, for f every five technical people, one admin uh, was this personal. Any were removed? Uh, no, we have not yet uh, removed. We're in the process of actually of, uh, of uh, uh, doing the placement. Uh, so, uh, but we're uh, actually anticipating about almost 80 percent will actually be removed. Next slide, please. So we look at now the, which is the accomplishments of uh, and activities of uh, the department uh, relative to the uh, SONA directives of the president uh, in 2016. Uh, first directive is to develop a national broadband plan to accelerate the deployment of fiber optic cables and wireless technologies to improve internet speed. So, uh, so we now have the national broadband plan in place uh, as well as uh, uh, ICT plans development and management uh, in place and uh, we will be undertaking the national ICT household survey. Um, second directive, uh, Wi-Fi access shall be provided at no uh, charge uh, in selected public uh, places. Uh, we are now, or we are continuing the implementation of the free public, uh, 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 free internet uh, in uh, public uh, places. And uh, we will have to actually move faster um, uh, relative to the signing of uh, the national free Wi-Fi uh, uh, becoming actually a law. Next slide, please. Establishment of the national government portal. Uh, uh, so the initiatives of the, the department are the following national government portal project, the national government data center project, and uh, uh, ICT systems and infrastructure development, management and advisory with uh, groups. Second, uh, fourth is to enhance local business environment to address, uh, to address business registration and processing. Okay, uh, we are now piloting uh, uh, the electronic uh, business uh, permit and licensing uh, system that would also include uh, your own analysis of the, the uh, Baler in Aurora province. Next slide, please. Okay, translate high growth economy into more and better jobs and continue to attract investment that will generate thousands of jobs suitable for the poor and less skilled members of the workforce. Uh, so uh, this is where our ICT industry and countryside development actually is, uh, is uh, focused on. The next wave cities project, uh, stepping up the value, team, the value chain project. Our uh, digital startup uh, uh, ecosystem uh, is a project, the rural impact sourcing project, and our technology for education, employment, entrepreneurship, economic development, uh, or tech for ed project. Okay. We would like to move on now to uh, our major accomplishments, uh, what we have completed and we, what we have launched uh, beginning this year. The National Broadband Plan uh, was finally approved by the President uh, and the Cabinet on, on March uh, this year. Okay, we launched it uh, publicly uh, on the same month and uh, uh, we are ab just about to actually was this, uh, release the tender for, uh, was this the for the feasibility study. Next slide, please. So uh, we also have the national government portal. Uh, as of today, we have 102 
online services uh, uh, using the government portal. Uh, we are providing 522 open data sets and uh, we have proposed to the Office of the President uh, uh, an executive order directing all departments of government to integrate frontline services to the DICT National Government Portal. And we'd, we'd like to show you a short uh, video on this one. Can we have the video, please? back okay next slide please as of today um, uh, mr. chair we have eight government uh, agency users using the national government uh, portal uh, uh, the idea is to actually just maintain four major registries for the whole of government and these are the following um, uh, the person uh, the person uh, Person Information Registry, um, and we have uh, the Philippine Statistics Authority, the Professional Regulation Commission, and Department of Budget Management are using this uh, registry. Uh, business Registry, that's all businesses uh, in, the, which is in the Philippines. So we have SAC, DTI, and uh, the Cooperative Development Authority using our registry. The Transport Registry uh, being used by uh, Sis Marina. And the land registry, uh, right now uh, we have the Department of Health, uh, uh, B, uh, Philippine uh, uh, Field Health, uh, was this, uh, uh, using this, uh, was this, this uh, registry. And we plan to actually uh, uh, advocate for more agencies to actually uh, uh, make use of uh, the national government portal. Next slide, please. Okay. So these are just some of the... Well, it's, a source, it's a source of information. They just log in and they can find the information they need. And they can also uh, do transaction, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Okay. So these are just uh, some of the shared uh, the services that are... The being total automation, meaning you do away with physical transactions altogether. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, we also do away of versus <coughs> moving from one you know, physical office to, uh, uh, to the other. How is the payment system done? Like um, uh, that's actually part of uh, which is the, the presentation, uh, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, so we have uh, for our government network uh, go or GovNet, uh, we have 175 uh, agencies now connected to GovNet. Uh, we have 15 plus six. Uh, that's 21 government agencies using our uh, unified national government data centers. Uh, we have two of these. Uh, we actually have a third one being uh, constructed in uh, Subic. We have 130 agencies uh, using our uh, gold mail or the government uh, 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 email system um, with about almost 30,000 gold uh, versus accounts uh, using it. And then uh, we're piloting, currently piloting the electronic business permit licensing system and uh, we'd like to show you uh, this uh, uh, video on this one. Can we have the video please? And this would include uh, actually, like I said, Valera. online because there's two options now you can do over the counter and you can also do online how is it done 
that's uh, the DBPM Land Bank, right? Uh, that's yeah. DBPM Land Bank. Uh, they have to have. Do they have to have an account there to to be able to pay, or they can use credit cards? So they can use our Visa card. Credit card, uh, and, and uh, debit, debit card issued by Land Bank and DBP. Okay, that's good. Huh? They don't need to have accounts there. Important yun, because if you require to have accounts there, then you're dead. <laughs> it's limited, limited uh, uh, currency only. Uh, it's the LG which has to have the bank account, because dun papasok po yung payment. Right, right. Okay. Okay, to continue, Mr. Chair, uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, currently, we're hosting 587 websites uh, in our government web hosting services. Kaya matapansin nyo, medyo kukumukunti ngayon yung mga government websites na nahahak. Okay, we're hosting 32 agencies in our uh, agency and records management uh, information system, 11 agencies in our project management uh, system uh, for government, and uh, 11 agencies using our learning management system or Gabay Aral. Next slide, please. Now, uh, this is actually one... Uh, you said uh, before we go to the free Wi-Fi, can I ask how come the DOF is not part of the national government portal? Department of Finance, you, meaning BIR and Customs. Palagi ko, yun ang pinaka... Uh, they are part. Uh, they are part. Uh, yung BIR is uh, in, uh, already linked. Um, can you pay your taxes online? Kasi sa BIR, yeah, sabi nga nila automation, pero ang definition nila ng automation, that's why I asked earlier if it was full, full automation. Partial automation lang, pwede kang mag-submit, pero required ka pa rin magbigay ng hard copy, which to me is, it's kind of pinahirapan mo pa sila, dinoble mo pa yung requirement, di ba? It's, it's supposed to be in lieu, eh, di ba? Yung, yung uh, automation. Meron po kasi silang mga existing legacy system, so medyo progressive po na ini-improve na lang po. Can we make a roadmap for them na they, they will graduate from all these legacy systems? Uh, tsaka yung talagang hinihina tao, yung ayaw nila makapag-deal sa mga ano eh, mga RDO, <laughs> sa mga, ay, di ba? Kasi doon na, na, na bumapasok yung mga discretion, tapos yung, di ba, tinatakot yung taxpayers. Sana wala na face-to-face -face masyado. Right. Tapos, yung, uh, yung sa customs pa, what, well, DOF, what we're doing po uh, is uh, what will replace the national single window. Um, okay. not, not the custom system itself, but uh, yung fund before that part. So it, that, that system will go live uh, this need December. To, you need to because of ASEAN. Eh. You really need that national single window. Yeah, so that's, that's uh, yeah. one of the reasons for that. Uh, um, we're replacing the national single window. It will also be linked with the ASEAN single window. Uh, and that system will go live po by this December. That's the target. Po. So this is being done together with the Department of Finance and uh, the, the DTI. And it involves 66 uh, trade regulatory agencies po, uh, plus uh, linking to the Bureau of Customs. Tapos, uh, just to give you an example, for example, namatayan ka, you're supposed to pay your estate tax. Uh, requirement pa ng BIR na kukuha ka ng signed copy of the death certificate o yung loop, value ng lupa sa San Juan, Batangas or sa, sa Iba, Zambales. So pupunta ka pa doon to get a copy. When all you have to do is really, if we, all this information is online, then you can just retrieve it. And then you just do an e-filing, di ba? We, we can really make our lives, the lives of our citizens easier eh? kung, kung gusto natin, di ba? Uh, so yun, yun ang suggestion ko, no? We, we, because uh, it's a parallel, uh, it's parallel to our efforts dun sa Committee on Ways and Means to streamline the filings for, for all of these uh, things. Uh, tapos meron silang dito sa tax, the train bill, meron sila yung interconnectivity, meaning gusto pa nilang makonect yung mga tindahan, mga merchants, sa sistema nila. E eh, sabi ko, pag-file nga ng return, Taon-taon, isang bes, isang araw lang yun, eh, nagbabag down na yung system nyo. Ano pa kaya yung araw-araw, arawin nyo pa? Eh, eh, ora orada merong filing nung ano. Pwede nyo ba silang tulungan dun sa, ano, sa requirements? Mukhang they don't realize, you know, I don't think there's an IT person there. Eh. So, they don't realize how, what, what the information storage uh, is needed dun for a system like that. So, maingit kami dun sa portion na yun sa administrative reforms, yung interconnectedness. Like sa mall, di ba? May POS system sila. Gusto nila, yung POS, nakakonect na rin sa BIR. So, medyo ambitious, no? So, can you 
maybe make it part of any feasibility study you have. But I think it's I think it's a good idea. You know, in paper it's a good idea. It's just uh, um, really the implementability or the administrative uh, feasibility of it that we have to look into. You say. Um, yeah, Mr. Chair, we'll, we'll um, talk to them about it. My understanding is uh, they're looking at an initial threshold for so uh, companies uh, 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 large taxpayers, for instance. So, uh, so you know, 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 because the, the large banks, for instance, how many branches do they have? Uh, the large uh, malls, ilang ilang tindahan na yan, di ba? So, talagang it's a geometric increase in the number of transactions and information to be stored or processed, di ba? Anyway, continue, sir. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is actually one of the highlights uh, which is, uh, for the department as far as uh, 2017 um, uh, rollout is concerned. You uh, having free Wi-Fi in ESA, and uh, the aspiration is to actually, uh, you know, uh, replicate uh, what we've done in ESA uh, to all parts of, uh, of uh, the country. Um, we now have uh, over. Uh, to, uh, to Almost 600,000 people. Uh, 52 52 percent of was this of uh, the daily uh, uh, commuters of uh, MRT, and as well as uh, on the ground uh, uh, street level was this uh, commuters uh, within Elsa uh, uh, using was this the free Wi-Fi, and that's about uh, was this. Uh, Mobilis daw. Mobilis daw. Yeah. Mobilis pa daw sa Dun sa bayad. Yeah. Pero ang aspiration namin is kung pwedeng ma-replicate namin sa buong bansa ito. If we're able to do this, definitely we've arrived. Mr. Secretary. Mr. Chair, just a brief, a briefer on the internet speed in the country. When we first came in in uh, last year, 2016, the uh, global standard for internet speed was uh, 5 megabytes per second. The Philippines was at 2.5 per second, which is only half of the global standard. This was reported by Akamai, but uh, in uh, the first quarter of uh, 2017, Akamai reported that uh, the Philippines has uh, reached the global standard of 5 0.5 megabytes per second. But because uh, other countries have uh, far advanced infrastructure, the global standard in uh, internet speed uh, at 10 to 11 megabytes per second. Now, as per the report of uh, both uh, JP Morgan and uh, uh, Speed Tests company, uh, just uh, recently, we have reached also already the uh, global standard on internet speed. But uh, we still have a lot to do as far as putting in more infrastructure because other countries are also building and building also their infrastructure. Because the matter of uh, internet speed, to my mind, will increase uh, year by year as countries build infrastructure so, so that uh, we will not be again lagging behind. We'll try to keep abreast as far as building this infrastructures are concerned. So that is the latest on internet speed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, do we have an AVP on that? Uh, para may pakita lang natin. Hi, everyone. This is a quick update video, or maybe even a public service announcement. I am currently sitting along EDSA, and a lot of you may have seen my recent videos about free Wi-Fi along EDSA. When it first launched, it was only at MRT or LRT stations, train stations, but now they've actually filled in all the gaps between, at least smart, I'm not sure about Globe, they've already filled in the gaps in between, and you can get free Wi-Fi just pretty much anywhere along EDSA, just stand by the side of the road. I think it's a really great development or advancement to the program, so I just wanted to share it here on the channel. I know some people say, what about snatchers? What about drivers that might use it? Well, if we always had to like scale back projects just in case, just in case, just in case, nothing would ever get any better. So yes, maybe there are going to be snatchers that try and steal your phone, but just try and be alert. We can't just not have nice things because of a few bad people out there. Anyway, let me show you my cell phone so I can show you that I really am connected to free Wi-Fi along EDSA. Now I'm using my bag to keep the sun away from the phone, but just to prove to you, I really am still beside Edsa at the People Power Monument. So you can see right now I'm connected to Smart Wi-Fi MRT Edsa. And if we do a speed test,
you can see that we're getting pretty good down speeds. So you can see we got 12 down and around 3.7 up. That's pretty impressive. So that's pretty much the whole video. I just wanted to show that there really is free Wi-Fi all the way along Edson now, not just at the train stations. Um, so go ahead and try it out. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching. What time was the test day again? Uh, this was actually uh, done sometime in July. What time of the day? Uh, I uh, actually said that he's a, a blogger. Um, in uh, YouTube, uh, we just saw that, and uh, uh, he took this, uh, as you can see, around the uh, morning. Uh, and uh, by the looks of the traffic, in, uh, in eight at that time, he did not last hour. No? So, uh, but that speed um, has been um, validated. validated by almost everyone. In fact, it was the speed. Say, I, 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 it was a match of mobility. 13 ba? 13? 13 uh, up and uh, about 3 or 4 Mbps down. Mm. Um, better than what you get at your home, sir. <laughs> in fact, you know, we reclaim it back. It's a uh, chunk of bills. We don't have to pay for it. So the telcos have to answer that, sir. Okay, thank you, uh, Yosakuyo. Kaya, Mr. Chair, mapapansin nyo, wala masyadong nagre-reklamo ngayon sa mahirap sumakay ng MRT at saka ma-traffic sa EDSA. Too busy uh, on Facebook. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> Can we have uh, the next slide, please? Okay. And uh, as of today, uh, in terms of uh, implementation of the free Wi-Fi in public places uh, uh, is concerned, uh, we have a total of 759 sites. Uh, already was uh, implemented all over uh, the Philippines. The, the target uh, up to the end of uh, the first quarter of uh, 2018 is about 13,000 uh, uh, sites. And for the rest of 2018, based uh, on the proposed uh, 2018 budget, we're going to be adding uh, what is, uh, at, uh, a little over 5,000. So making total I mean, by the end of uh, next year is about 18,000, uh, uh, over 18,000 sites all over the Philippines. And that's practically the whole uh, country now. 18,000? Yeah. Next slide, please. Uh. Prioritization is the tour, do the tourism spots get prioritized? Uh, uh, Basatang uh, ano namin do Mr. Chair is uh, to actually prioritize uh, the public places. So uh, these are uh, outside of the municipios, uh, the bus terminals, okay, hubs, uh, airports, maybe. Airports. Airport. So uh, this is just actually uh, the distribution so far uh, in terms of the provinces. Uh, okay, can we have the next slide, please? Okay, thank you. We now move to another uh, very impactful uh, this is an initiative of the department, which is uh, the Tech for Ed. Uh, uh, this is actually a continuing uh, implementation of uh, the Tech for Ed uh, project, which started several years back. As of today, we have uh, 1,628 Tech for Ed centers uh, scattered all over which is the country with about se almost 70,000 registered users. No? So ito, ginagamit ito uh, usually for cap uh, capability building. Uh, yung mga uh, kababayan natin ginagamit din nila ito to actually communicate with their uh, relatives, uh, with season friends uh, working abroad. Okay? And uh, we recently added two more applications uh, into this, uh, which is actually the uh, eAgri. Uh, and the uh, e-marketplace, which is an e-commerce uh, 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 application. Next slide, please. Uh, sorry, uh, can we play the, what is the, the, kahit yung kalahati lang, medyo maaba yan eh.
digital divide. Hindi 100% naman of course na nakita namin lahat pero isa-isa kada sektor may nalalaman kaming mga success stories katulad sa mga OSYs na nagkaroon ng, ng pagkakataon na mag-aaral sa ALS tapos na libre, nabigyan namin ng libre training Mr. Chair, the, the last time I was there is about 500, um, uh, close to 500 gigabytes of information is already inside, so I, I, I don't think they are able Before we move on, uh, Yusek, when's a free Wi-Fi, I'll be looking at your slides on the provinces. Uh, I'm just wondering what, what, what's the basis for the number of live sites, because Batangas has 39, Aklan has 42, but then Agusan only has one, Agusan Norte. Uh, Cam Norte only has one, Lanao Norte only has one, Maguindanao only has one. I'm just wondering, what is the, 
Sambuanga Norte. Yeah, I just wanted because Eastern Samar, there's only one. These are these names are among the poorest provinces in the country. Yeah, so, uh, Mr. Chair, the uh, numbers that you see there are actually lighted up uh, uh, sites out of uh, the 13,000 that we are uh, planning. Does lighted up mean, please? Uh, Operational, sir. Okay. You can go there now and um, have free access to Wi-Fi. Uh, the others are still ongoing, and of course the problem that we have, we are uh, uh, the same uh, permits and things like that. But we are now going faster, Your, your Honor, sir, because of you, the law that you uh, came up with, the free Wi-Fi law, where the... Uh, Sana, ano rin? Pagbigyan natin yung mga mahihirap na probinsya, di ba? Ah, uh, Unahin din natin, unahin na din natin sila. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, the, we are uh, prioritizing uh, 4th, 5th, and 6th uh, class municipalities. That's great, that's great. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, I understand also that Kuminsan, when we put up this Wi-Fi installation, it is also dependent kung may telco services na doon. Yeah, mahirap so, siguro mga otherwise, missionary area, area yung iba. Kaya hindi ma-access, sayang lang ang installations. I understand. I understand. That is why yeah. the broadband of uh, our country comes in, which is also the project of the That's right. The so, if that's the case, can you identify the areas where there are no uh, telco infrastructure? So, there is no telco infrastructure, so we can... Can you? Uh, Mr. Chair, can, can we actually uh, prioritize, eh, ma? Uh, can we submit a separate uh, was this, uh, uh, yes, yes, please, please, please. Uh, okay. don't not require it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, just uh, as information, Mr. Chair, uh, we are using the uh, data of Cormelec because they have a very big, uh, they have a good data on what part of the countries are unserved by the telcos yes, because the of their, uh, their uh, cyber protection. <laughs> 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 but uh, in the, uh, they have a, a survey and already are implementing, uh, uh, they, they have uh, put up their precincts more or less where there are, uh, they know where there are unsaved, so they, that's where they put satellite, Your Honor. Thank you, Yusek uh, Rio. Uh, can we move uh, to the next slide, please? Okay. Uh, this is something close to my heart uh, because this is uh, part of my portfolio. Uh, we're very pleased to uh, uh, report to you, Mr. Chair, that as of today, we have more than 1.2 million Filipinos directly working for the BPO industry in the Philippines. Okay, And uh, what's actually amazing about this is that more than 300,000 of this 1.2 million are actually working in the, in the provinces. And uh, as uh, mentioned proudly by uh, IBPAP when they actually met with you, uh, for every one uh, direct employee in the BPO sector, it actually generates an indirect employment of three people, which means that uh, we now have 3.6 million Filipinos indirectly uh, working for the BPO uh, industry as well of which uh, more than 900,000 are actually outside of Metro Manila. That's a total of 4.8 million employment generated by the Philippine IPBPM industry. Next slide, please. Okay. And in terms of revenue, Mr. Chair, okay, as of uh, the end of June of this year, the total, uh, we're, we're actually expecting a total revenue of uh, 20, 3 billion US dollars uh, for the rest of, uh, this of uh, for the whole of 2017. And uh, 5.7 billion US dollars is actually forecasted to be flowing to the uh, was this, uh, different cities outside of Metro Manila. Next slide, please. And that's the reason why we're also fighting for the maintenance of uh, any favorable incentives for the industry. Uh, so and we're getting help from some senators like former TESDA Secretary Joel Villanueva who helped the BPO industry when he was in TESDA. So yeah. we see your efforts. Uh, we don't want it to go to waste and let yeah, these people course, yeah, yeah. leave. So especially, uh, 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 Mr. Chair, especially incentives for countryside cities. In fact, we're asking the BPOs to come up with a new set of incentives that is more suited to their type of industry rather than the brick and mortar manufacturing type of incentives of the 1970s and 80s. So. We're, we're actually working with them on this, uh, with this, you know, on this uh, new set of incentives uh, uh, to be proposed to the Senate. Okay. So, uh, of 
the what is of the uh, 25 uh, cities that have, we have classified as next wave cities, 24 of these cities already have multinational, global, or CSO, BPO uh, companies operating there. Okay. And the latest one would actually be Balanga in Bataan and Puerto Princesa in, uh, was this in uh, Palawan, as well as Rojas City in, uh, was this in Capiz. And uh, we also have conducted 37 startup uh, uh, training, uh, digital startup training all over since the Philippines with uh, about uh, uh, 1,929 uh, already trained. And uh, favorite houses, uh, uh, project naming Aon is actually rural impact sourcing. Uh, we've conducted 31 rural impact sourcing workshops uh, uh, all over the country for, 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 for the last three years with over 6,000 uh, trained. Now, uh, Mr. Chair, if you remember last year we showed you uh, see some video on uh, Nilin Baterna, okay? And because of that, uh, sabi mo, dinagdagan niyo kami ng 22 million was this uh, 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 budget to actually implement this training program uh, uh, in, in, in for the rest of the country. We'd like to show you this was this uh, this uh, report uh, through an AVP. Rural Impact Source program aims to help address unemployment and support more Filipinos in the countryside to gain employment with online freelancing industry through workshops and technical training. presentation in the sense that uh, you you your you say how many people you trained etc but I think I don't think I think the DICT is, is, is an extraordinary agency and uh, can produce extraordinary results I think you should uh, add it to your performance indicators how you've grown that industry within the localities I realize it, it may it may uh, uh, require you working with the local uh, ICT councils no but really you must monitor it meaning nanganak basa Diba? Meron bang naingganyo doon na pumasok sa mga trabaho at industriya ang yan? Diba? Otherwise, kung hindi, kung hindi siya nanganak, di, that's just, uh, diba? Yun ang, talawang, yun ang measurement natin eh. Nanganak ba siya? Like I look at Negros, you know, in Puerto Princesa, I saw you there. So, talagang you're doing your job. But let's make sure that nanganak siya at uh, naingganyo talaga pumasok dyan sa mga industriya ang yan, yung mga bata. Uh, uh, we've, of the 26 uh, was this, uh, training batches this year, we uh, uh, graduate pa kami ng, uh, isa pa lang that's in Bogo City. Uh, as we are uh, meeting here right now, we graduation yung Carmona, okay? And then uh, on the 19th, graduation ng Kabad Baran. And we would like to actually be very, very pleased to inform you, Mr. Chair, that, uh, you know, uh, 
hindi pa tapos yung training ng mga to. We already have about, siguro mga 30% of them nakakuha na ng process ng, uh, ng uh, jobs online, okay? And uh, in fact, kato yung isang uh, nandudong kanina, uh, can you imagine uh, the guy from Kabadbaran na gusto doon na natin nakakuha siya ng process uh, ng online project uh, to actually do photography. So, uh, kung hindi namin ginawa yun, it's fantastic. And uh, jobs, entrepreneurships, yan talaga ang gusto natin mangyari dyan. So, we'll continue to support the department in that respect, no? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ang usapan namin with the LGUs here is uh, yung field training ang gagawin namin. Okay, and we're, we're hoping that the, f the 25 scholars in each of these cities would actually later on do their own training. Okay, kaya uh, pinagtayo ko namin sila ng RIS hubs sa bawat uh, siyudad ng mato. So they can actually continue and, uh, uh, you know, uh, with the project, whether we're there or not, uh, tuloy-tuloy ko nila yun. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay. Uh, this is now the part of cybersecurity, and I'd like to call on uh, what is uh, Asek uh, Alan Kabanlong to, uh, to take over the presentation, please. Thank you, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair. I think it is enough to say today that people and companies no longer think about if they're going to be hacked, but when will it, ha when will it happen? So the DICT has unveiled the first national cyber Sorry, Aseka. Pagka may kailangan mag-CR, di na kailangan magpaalam sa chairman. Ha? Wait ka nang umalis lang. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you. Pabait kasi si Sek, nagpaalam ba? Hindi <laughs> naman kailangan. Pag kailangan, when you have to go, you have to go. <laughs> yes, sir. That's the DICD sir has unveiled the first national cyber security plan of the country last May 2 of, the, of this year and implemented various cyber security capability like, for example, our caravan. Uh, we started our, our caravan last April in Zamboanga City. And then we went to, again, the Oro City, Davao City, Amy University, and, as well. and next week, sir, we'll be in San Pablo City, like Laguna, for a total of 6,000 plus uh, cyber-aware uh, individuals. Uh, but we are still continuing, continuing to do this, sir, um, until the end of the year. We also integrated um, cybersecurity into the, into the curriculum. Um, we provided the curriculum guidelines gathered from um, the, the George Marshall Center for European Security Studies in Germany. It is a, a curriculum that was crafted by experts from NATO, US, and other countries. And it's now being adapted by one of the universities here in the, in the Philippines, and they will, be, they will be providing and offering Bachelor of Science in Cybersecurity next year. Yeah. AMA University, sir. So, na mm. natapos na po namin yung uh, curriculum, and then um, for approval ng ng CHED, sa technical wor working group level. Also, sir, we also have um, initiative in offering a professional science and masters in cybersecurity. Uh, one of the universities here in, in Pampanga um, signified their interest to offer the, the, the course. Um, that's the Holy Angel University. So it's also partnership with the USAID. And yung curriculum ho na galing sa George Marshall Center, uh, European School of uh, Security Studies, yun ho yung aming uh, ginagamit as one of the references ng pag ng curriculum. Next slide, please. Next slide. Uh, that, that's all, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Asik uh, Kamandol. Now, uh, the DICT is, uh, is uh, also into uh, this, uh, ICT cap capacity development uh, through our uh, training institute. And uh, the trainings are actually focused on three areas, digital literacy, um, competency standards and certification, and um, national ICT training. Um, digital literacy uh, is uh, actually, uh, although it's open to everyone, uh, there's um, a special focus on um, the out-of-school youth, uh, special, well, senior citizens like me, uh, women, and uh, you know, the uh, different people, uh, people, and IP. 
Um, national IT training is uh, uh, basically focused on uh, which is, uh, capacitating government employees in the use of, is, of uh, digital technologies. We thought of making one for uh, mga undergoing rehab, for persons undergoing rehab. We are actual compared Yeah, uh, yes, we are, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, in fact, we have a design was this na parang rural impact sourcing for uh, 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 returnees. Okay, thank you. Can we have the next slide, please? Okay. In terms of uh, policies and plans, uh, we are uh, three of us working on uh, the amending the Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure Route Certification Authority Certificate Policy. Uh, the, this is on uh, digital overseas, uh, on the use of digital signatures. Okay, um, uh, we have. Uh, uh, we have come up uh, with the department circular uh, on the, the use of uh, which is of uh, cloud, uh, which is actually the Philippine government's cloud first policy. Uh, so it's going to be the policy of the government now to uh, which is to put everything on the cloud um, and issue the MIT joint memorandum together with the DBM, extending the life of uh, the medium term IT harmonization initiative. Uh, this is to ensure that uh, you know all government ICT projects are uh, harmonized. Uh, para may iwasan natin yung mga silo uh, initiatives na ginagawa ko ng iba't ibang uh, government agencies. Um, we also uh, uh, we also launched the Philippine Digital T uh, TV Broadcasting Migration Plan uh, February of this year. Mag-uumpisa na ho yung, ano, yung uh, talagang migration initiative natin dito. So, uh, uh, in the next uh, I believe in the next four years, uh, uh, we're going to be, Philip is going to be very, very busy moving uh, from analog uh, TV broadcasting to uh, digital TV broadcasting. Next slide, please. Sorry, what is the date? I missed it. What is the date of the invitation? Um, uh, okay. uh, Commissioner Kodobo, can you... Uh, digital uh, na tayo, uh, Commissioner. Oh. Apo, uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Chair. Good morning. Good morning. Um, actually, po, uh, we already started the... Uh, uh, the migration and um, there are many uh, broadcasters that are already uh, broadcasting under uh, the digital signal po. That would be ABS, PTB4, um, Five, ABC5, huh? sir, yeah. and uh, Iglesia Channel and uh, N7. So, ano po, they're already um, transmitting but simulcast po yan, the analog and the digital channel for those who cannot afford yet the setup box or the new digital television. Um, they can still uh, they can still watch television to the analog uh, television. So never must face out yung analog. Actually, sir, ano po, um, if we reach if we reach we, we reach uh, around the uh, eighty percent, sir, hmm. of uh, the population using uh, digital television, then we can now shift to uh, uh, ano per, ano? Right now, sir, it's very cheap, mga five hundred pesos na lang. Five hundred. The generic one, sir. That's one time expense. One time, one time expense. Yes. Sir. Thank you, Commissioner Cordoba. Uh, we now move, Mr. Chair, to uh, the DICT programs and projects and our proposed 2018 uh, budget. So if you look at our budget structure, uh, beginning 2018, uh, we will implement the, which is the program uh, expenditure, uh, which is uh, classification uh, budget structure. So uh, can we have the next slide, please? Uh, so it's our... KPIs will be uh, three for anchored on three major uh, was this, uh, programs. Uh, that's the uh, ICT governance program, uh, plans development and management, cybersecurity policies development, uh, and our uh, forthcoming national ICT household uh, survey. The second uh, major program is uh, Act 3 on uh, systems and infrastructure development, management, and advisory program. Next slide, please. Okay. And uh, also, was this uh, the ICT systems and infrastructure development management advisory program specific to uh, the management and operations of our infrastructure? And finally, our capability development and management program uh, that would uh, cover ICT li literacy development as well as uh, industry and countryside uh, development. Next slide, please. Okay. So, ito na yung itsura ng uh, proposed 2018 uh, budget namin for, uh, was this for, for uh, DICT uh, alone, uh, excluding our tax agencies, uh, we're actually proposing a total uh, budget of uh, 6.2 billion uh, pesos. 
can we have the next slide, please? Okay. And uh, I'd like to call on now the, the, the three uh, attached agencies to uh, present their uh, 2018 uh, proposed budgets. Good morning, once again, Mr. Chair. I'll be presenting the Cybercrime Investigation and Coordination Center. The CICC was created by the virtue of the Public Act 1175 uh, or the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012. Uh, we have these powers and functions to formulate uh, the, the national plan uh, to coordinate the preparation of the Prep Act and effective measures to prevent and suppress cybercrime, to monitor cybercrime cases being bandied by participating law enforcement agencies, to facilitate international cooperation and intelligence, investigations, training, and capacity building related to cybercrime prevention, suppression, and prosecution, to coordinate the support and participation of business sectors, local government units, and non-governmental organizations in cybercrime prevention programs, and other projects to recommend the enactment of appropriate laws, issuances, measures, and policies to call upon any government agency to render assistance in the accomplishment of the CIC's mandated functions and to perform on other matters related to, to, to uh, cybercrime. Um, the first function, the, the first power and function of the CICC is, not, is now transferred to the Department of, of ICT, sir. Uh, as regards to the National Cyber Security Plan and the establishment of the National Computer Emergency Response Team as defined in the Republic Act 10844 or the DICT law. <coughs> Next slide, please. For the CICC institutional build-up, um, the DBM has already approved our NOSCA last July 4 of 2017. Um, and the approved budget for 2016. Uh, excuse me, Asik. Uh, I think we need to actually highlight the fact that we have not yet received the NOSCA. Uh, Mr. Chair, the notice of uh, was of uh, salaries, compensation. So, we received no penalty, sir. The NOSCA, yes, sir. Uh, last week, sir, last week. Notice of staffing, staffing and, uh, and compensation. Yeah. So, kahapon na. Yes, sir. Uh, it, ito na po yung sir. Na-receive na po natin ng August 8, 2017 na approve ng BBM. What is it? What is it? Uh, maybe in brief, tell us what the NOSCA contains. Yes, sir. Um, the CIC, sir, is, is a newly created attached agency of the department. Um, bali ho, ang DICT po yung nag- nag-create po nung mga offices ng attached agency na yun as uh, the secretariat of the chairman of the CICC, which is, who is the secretary of ICT, sir. So, na approve na yung NOSCA natin, sir, bago lang, but hindi pa ho tayo nag-recruit ng tao. So, concurrently, ako, ako, ako yung mahawak ng CICC. Um, the approved budget of CICC is not it utilized due to pending approval of the structure of the structure. Hanggang ngayon, sir, hindi pa namin nagamit yung pondo for 2017 since wala pa ho namang approved NOSCA yung five positions ng OP or presidential app appointees na mga positions. So for the accomplishment... How much, how much is awaiting? Uh, how much is pending because of that uh, non, non uh, Approval. Um, wala pa magkano, magkano. Uh, for for 2016, so we have 13 million pesos na na approved, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, hindi pa po yung nagagastos. Okay. Right. Kasi wala pa hong organizational structure. Uh, wala pang tao po. So we held also the meeting of the CICC. Like for example, sir, nung sa BPI, um, the secretary convened the CICC and met all involved, sir. So, at, at, at saka yung mga members ng CICC, the NBI, the PNP, the DOJ. So, napag-usapan ho namin, and then uh, we conducted an investigation. And then we, uh, after the investigation, we turned over the investigation to the Privacy Commission since it was not a breach. So, it was a human error. 
So you know, you know, having this position in the BPA glitch. And last week, sir, we we also convened, and we have we have two new members the from the private sector and the academy. So complete na ho yung member ng intelligence board. Eh? Yes, uh, the Institute of Electronics Engineers of the Philippines for the private sector, and uh, beside uh, Philippine Society of IT uh, Educators for the it's an organization, not individuals. No individuals. Oh, okay. Organizations, sir. Uh, and then the the CIC sir was supported by the DICT Cybersecurity Bureau in in crafting, in creating. The, in the organizational structure. So with that, so we have the approved structure. We have three offices done, which is the policy plans and programs, the cybercrime investigation office, and the admin and finance office. Next slide, please. Cybercrime si situation, sir. B uh, this statistics came from the DOJ, Office of Cybercrime. So. Uh, one of the members of the CICC as well. So for 2016, January to December, we have a total of 3,151 complaints for cybercrime and cyber-related offenses received by PNP, NBI, and the DOJ OOC. Next slide, please. <coughs> we also have a, a light project that um, soon may be implemented if, of course, my budget. It is the Lawful Intercept, Geolocation, and Humanitarian Technology, uh, which is also conceptualized by the CICC with the DICT. So for our CICC proxy budget structure... Say a little more about that light project. Light project. Uh, please. So the light project sir, is, uh, it will dramatically improve law enforcement capabilities. Basically, the CICC uh, will support law enforcement, the PNP, the NBI, as regards to um, the technical attribution. Because we know that cyber that cybercrime uh, is major to be solved because of the anonymity online. So that's why with this, with this project, we believe that it's um, not legal ang kulang sa legal measures ang kulang sa ating cybercrime pre prevention kung hindi po technical measures. Kasi uh, our law enforcement authorities, they lack technical capabilities in attribution, in, uh, in, in finding out kung sino ho ba yung real per perpetrators online because of the nature of anonymity online. So with this, with this uh, project, I believe that it can significantly prevent and, and deter crimes specifically cybercrime. Who had convictions for cyber libel, for instance? That's not a crime where uh, the location, the pinpointing the location is crucial, diba? I believe, sir, we have only three uh, conviction on, of cybercrime na nangyari. Ano yung crime? Um, data interference. We also have... Um, yung libel, sir, medyo mahirap na po na because the Facebook, you need... Uh, hindi kasi priority ng Facebook yung libel, eh. Uh, sa, sa ibang bansa, when, when, once you request for a libel, inuuna po nila yung child pornography, okay. inuuna nila yung uh, data interference, okay. and yung cyber sex. Yeah. So, yun, yun so sabi yung case na convict na yun? Or uh -huh, yung tatlo. Uh, so, could you give us the details of those? I'm just yes, curious. Sir. It's, it's an insight into how the law operates also. Okay. And, yes, and, uh, yes. So, the LARP project can, can also save human lives and alleviate suffering. Um, of course, uh, it can better manage the life cycle. I have a question, uh, ASEC. Yes, sir. <coughs> Kasi meron na recently, mga last week, nung pinirmahan ni Presidente yung Republic Act uh, regarding the indexation of the crimes. Mm -hmm. Parang na-highlight ang akala ng mga netizens bagong crime siya. But it's actually old crime already in the revised penal code yes, regarding spreading fake false news. Oh. false news. So, yes. uso ngayon yung fake news, di ba? Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's covered, uh, even if it's, if, if let's say you, you, I'm just curious, I want to see the, the, how you interpret the law, no? The, um, is a netizen who spreads, let's say he sees it on Facebook, then he shares it, siya ba ay, ano, is he liable? Um, mm. With regard to the, to that, yung Article uh, 132 uh, or one, yes, something like that, one, one, 100 something of the mm. revised penal code. Yes, yes. It's very obscure because mm. na, na, it's one of those crimes that you don't because it's listed alongside the compendium of others, other crimes. Mm. No? 
So yes, how how do you interpret that article? Well, I believe, sir, if it's if it's real, it's really really fake, and then you. Uh, Based on that new new law that was signed yeah. by, the, by the president, I believe, sir, it, it can be... You can be liable, but your defense is that you right. did it in good faith or yes, uh, uh, innocently without malice. Yes. Uh, Especially, sir, yeah. if you do the... So it's a defense. The defense is uh, the lack of in criminal intent is a defense. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If it's social media, because it's a big story. So that could be in yes, terms sir. of... Uh, what do you think, uh, yes, Secretary Rudy? I have not paid attention too much on that provision, but okay. this is my... Uh, concern also because you are the legislator because we talk there also in the cyber crime prevention act under section six and seven which speaks of a cyber libel and rather a cyber rebellion and cyber sedition and it says there that uh, uh, crimes and then afterwards there is that i think section when it says crimes punishable under the revised penal code uh, shall also be punished under the Cyber Crime Prevention Act right. if committed via the use of cyber, internet, etc. Yes. And normally, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, when we commit act uh, punishable under a special law, mm -hmm. the matter of criminal intent is no not longer. necessary. Yeah. But the problem, is, the problem is in the Cyber Crime <laughs> Prevention Act it says that crimes punishable by the revised penal code. Therefore, while there is a, this is a special law, and therefore, ordinarily, under the special laws, the crime, uh, the act is punishable itself, regardless yeah, of the yeah, intention. It's mala yes, prohibita. prohibita. Yeah. Can we, maybe we can add a sentence there to say that uh, anybody prosecuted under that act is also, can also avail of the defenses in the revised provided penal. by the revised Just to clarify it. Because uh, without criminal intent, yeah. There is no crime committed under the revised. And we don't want it to give rise to, yeah. you know, unintended uh, or, or numerous uh, yeah. litigations. Yes. yes. So, so you, you think we should add a sentence there to clarify that? Uh, I think we should because it okay. may bring rise yeah. to a lot we of will, litigation. We can file that, uh, we can file that uh, Mr. Secretary. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Please continue. Uh. So basically, the LOG project can, uh, of course, uh, we devise a framework for that. Uh, of course, uh, not to violate any privacy of any individual. Since we are working together with the Privacy Commission, uh, if uh, if a law enforcement authority will will ask for a certain information, and it, sh it should pass through the National Privacy Commission just to check whether the privacy is not violated or not. So be misused, huh? that can be misused. Yes, sir. So, so uh, yeah. Yes, sir. May nagpo Facebook message dun sa asawa niya o sa girlfriend niya. Gusto niya hanapin, di ba? Okay. Ayun nga sir, when we... Make sure it's for the proper purpose. Yes, sir. Why am I also in our in our framework, uh, we included Privacy Commission so that maroon tayong check and balance dun sa pag-release ng information. Not guidelines, you know. It's it's for public purposes, not for yes, private... Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, next slide, please. So, sir, this is the CSC Plexi budget structure. Um, Next slide, please. And our budget, sir, proposed for uh, next year is only 19,722,000 pesos. Um, May only. Nakakulangan ho kayo. It's only, sabi mo, it's only. Wala pa yung ano, sir. Wala pa yung nagdito. Si Yusek, wala namang only dun sa ano niya. Dun sa presentation niya. Wala pa yung nagdito yung capital outlay, sir. In fact, they were given order budget for certain uh, equipment was approved by the cabinet. Yes, Unfortunately, because of uh, time, uh, uh, their budget was approved by the cabinet, but it was not part of the budget submitted by the DBM for 2018 because the approval of the cabinet came much later after the budget was made. So, kailangan kasi namin yung results of sophisticated equipment because the cyber crime, cyber hackings are increasing uh, in numbers and in severity. But hopefully, we can get a supplemental budget for that because we really need that kind of budget. Magkano uh, initial in a point? Uh, two, uh, two point seven billion, sir, for until twenty twenty two. Uh, but sir, in 2017, sir, is 678 million. You want it? Uh, yes, sir. Sana earlier. Yes, sir. Na, na ano na po yun, sir? Naka, naka happy happy na po yun, sir, uh, every year. Uh, um, that's it, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Uh, may I request uh, the National Privacy Commission? Yes, sir, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, good morning po. Sala po mga kasama po natin. Um, the National Privacy Commission, together with the DICT and the CICC, eh, may tuturi mong pinakabunso sa pamahalaan po ngayon. Ano? At uh, siguro bilang paniwala lang, ho, um, um, ang National Privacy Commission po talaga po um, we've been pushing awareness about the privacy issues or even the law itself sa buong bansa. And uh, recently, nag-commission po kami ng isang survey to go, um, kinomission po namin ng social weather station upang malaman din ano, yung um, baseline numbers when it comes to data privacy at yung appreciation po ng mga kalabayan po natin. Very, very interesting po ito, um, Mr. Chair, kasi tinanong po namin, gaano ba kahalaga sa mga Pilipino, ano, sa inyo, ang, uh, ang uh, privacy or yung, uh, yung personal data, yung protection ng personal data nyo. At lumabas po nito, out of 1,200 um, respondents nationwide, Eighty-five percent po ang tuturing na mahalaga yung karapatan nila, no, na mabangalagaan, no, uh, yung karapatan po nila bilang data subjects, yung karapatan po nilang right to be informed, right to have access, right to object, to process, right to complain, no, yan po inisa isa sa kanila. Eighty-five percent mahalaga sa kanila to. Next slide. At isa rin po ito, no? interesado ba silang malaman kung saan ginagamit yung kanilang info information? No? 94% ang nagsasabi no? so, sa bawat sampung tao. Ho, eh, malaki, lahat po tayo marahil dito sa kwarto ito. Interesado, saan ba nang pupunta lahat ito mga data na pinifila pa natin? No? At uh, saan ba ito, ito ginagamit? No? So in this context, eh, talaga po palang napatunayan din natin that privacy is not dead. Sabi mo nila kasi Pilipino, masyo tayo masyado, wala na po tayong paki sa privacy. Pero yun po pala no, ang, malaking, uh, ang malaking katotohanan dito. Uh, they are all concerned. At yung kababayan po natin, they find themselves um, uh, um, they are interested to have their rights protected. So ang ating po National Privacy Commission, na bunga po ng Data Privacy Act, ang DPA mong tutulong ng 21st century law, no? um, protecting 21st century rights of uh, Filipinos. Next slide. So, yun po, um, yun po ang mandando ng RA uh, 10173. Of course, sir, yun po inyong ama ang naging ama ko nitong batas na ito. At uh, malawalaw na rin po narating nito bago na po kami ka-organize pa lamang. Next slide. Pagkat uh, mahal ka po kasi na uh, una, ma magkaroon po talaga ng authority, no, ng, ng uh, knowledge center po itong uh, data, um, data privacy at yan po National Privacy Commission. Kailangan din po natin may, pak may pakilala ito bilang isang uh, authority na may regulatory functions no? upang ang obligasyon ng mga nangokolekta ng informasyon ay uh, may isulong. No? And so, in building the culture of privacy, talaga po generational po ito, um, meron pong karapatan ng mga mamamayan pero kailangan nilang malaman itong karapatan na ito meron pong obligasyon ng lahat ng mga kumpanya na nagpaproseso ng informasyon at kailangan pong masigurong sinusunod ho nila ito kaiba rin po yung ating batas kasi sir, naibalanse po talaga dito yung kahalagahan ng karapatan at the same time the free flow of information so yun po yung araw-araw na binabalanse namin dito Dahil kailangan naman po magtuloy ang pagpapalitan natin ng informasyon, tulad nga sa yung initiatives ng DICT with the government portal, ang sharing po ng information para may tulog, itulak pa po lalo no? ang mas magandang serbisyo at uh, may tulak po ang inibasyon no? at the uh, development here in our country. Next slide. So, sa loob po ng uh, labing limang buwan no, ng aming pong pagkakatatag, uh, nakito na rin po ang aming mga nagampanan. Again, ang aming pong emphasis is really to build uh, awareness and uh, ensure compliance here in the first two years and uh, go for enforcement on our third year. No? So, we're in the really limits of awareness and compliance. So, next slide po. So what we did uh, is really take a sectoral approach po dito in terms of compliance of companies. We have employed a sectoral approach, meaning who una una ang gobyerno bilang pinakamalaki pong uh, organisasyon no? nagpaproseso po ng uh, informasyon ng mamamayan. So we have uh, the telcos and the banking sector, the health sector, so kanya-kanya po silang sector. At dun po talaga po uh, uh, kami po uh, nakikipag-ugnayan sa kanila. Uh, upang may promote po itong uh, batas na ito. Um, siguro yun po yung ilan po namin mga na-achieve no, in the last uh, 15 months. Next next slide. At uh, yun nga po, no, dumarami rin po yung mga nagreklamo po sa amin. No? This was, I think, um, noong June 30, pero 
um, ito pong huli, August 31, we have already have 121 complaints. Ang pinakamarami pong complaints, Mr. Senator, eh, would be an authorized processing. Yung pong ginamit, yung litrato, halimbawa ng isa, at uh, ikinagit sa iba. Yan, also, at siguro may, kwen may kwento ko na lang po dito, siguro first time yung namin ilalabas doon, eh, nito kong huli, meron po kami eh, sinita na isa pong website, no? na meron pong reklamo kami natanggap na yung daw pong litrato ng kanyang uh, anak o yung isa pong ano, ay ginagamit, no? parang um, sa isang site, adult site siya, at uh, ikaw nga, so, uh, kumukuha sa nag-harvest ng pictures sa ibang website, sa Facebook, at yun yung ikinakabit, at nagbebenta ko sila ng well, uh, prostitution sa mga ko yung nangyayari, no? So, sinubukan po na na, uh, eh, well, we, we, dito po na-testing po yung long arm statute po ng batas po natin kasi sinulatan po namin uh, sila, kasama po si Asik Alang Kabalong din at in-invoke po natin for the first time yung data privacy law kasi dati po, cybercrime law po yung in-invoke natin, yung anti-pornography At mabuti naman po yung website, after 3 days po ng aming, ano, ay, tino, sila mismo nag-volunteer po silang i-take down itong yung adult section no, ng kanilang, uh, ng kanilang website. Kasi ito pong website nito is a general classified ads portal. No? You can upload, magbibenta ka ng household appliances. No? Parang crates ni store, Mr. Senator. Eh. Pero meron din silang ganun na feature. At tinangay na po namin yung isa pa yung mirror site. No? So, tinikbang din po nila yan. No? So, Di ba may violation din ng human trafficking laws yan? Yun po. Yun, yun din po, uh, Mr. Senator. So, ang magpositibong resulta nito by invoking this, nakita po natin itong long arm statute po nung, nung batas po natin at uh, kasi meron po nyo, ngayon po tayo itong FBI po nahihirapan po sila dito sa site na ito hindi ko na po babag dito, mamang papakita po nila po sa inyo report kasi baka sumikat pa yung site eh, <laughs> hindi na lang po pero yun po, malaki po ano po sa amin nito sa PICP and of course the National Privacy Commission kasi na-invoke po natin for the very first time yung privacy yung international, but marami pa po nangyayaring ganito, no? that our uh, citizens, sabi nga natin, these are statistics, eh, mahalaga sa kanilang nalaman kung saan, kung anong ginagawa, no? or kinukuha naman ba sila ng informasyon. Uh, sir, any complaints about uh, unauthorized dissemination of personal information, like by companies, for instance, or utilities, or things like that? Meron po ngayon na nag umano lang, recently, sir, um, yung hong na pangalan niya, nasa isang mailing list, na dinidistribute din ho doon sa... Relation yun, di ba? Sa pa, opo, kasi unauthorized processing po, lalo pa kung hindi mo niya na alam. So, But yun uh, po yung mga nilalakas sa... This information is passed on already, eh. By the time... Yes, sir. Yung kung maging end user ng information, it's, maybe it's been passed on twice or thrice already. How do you trace the... Uh, who, who gave the, the original source of the information? Well, well sir, kaya ho sa forensics ho yung papasok. So, we, wala pa, hindi pa ho nakaset up yung aming forensics uh, a lab, digital forensics lab, no? pero pwede din po doon, mang, uh, doon po natin matitrace po yan. Pero by, before the year end, ho, meron na po tayong gano'n. No? Kasama What's the penalty po, for something like that? Ano na natin for unauthorized processing? Kulong ba yun? Or? Up to seven years ano na kulong yun. No? Ano so, kulong yun? Lord, meron po gano'n. Uh, it's, it's usually companies who do that. Eh? How do you, who is it imposed upon? Yes, sir. Yung po yung company, the controller, no? so if it's a telemarketing company, uh, if it's a mismo a company, for example, uh, a real estate company, for example, that does this, no? Na, no? yun po sila po ang magiging liable po dito. Okay, yun thank yun. you. Next, next slide po. So yun po, dumadami na po tayo. So kami naman po, Kailangan po itong mahimay lalo itong batas na ito. So last, ito po the past, like 15 months, nabuo po natin implementing rules and regulations. We also came up with very um, important circulars. Matapansin niyo po about government po ito, security and personal data and government, data sharing agreements involving government. Of course, offshoot po rin ito lang ito, Mr. Senator, na nangyari po din sa COMELEC. So nakita po namin na kailangan linawin din sa mga government agencies po natin Eh, ano po ba yung uh, proper no, na magiging, magiging compliant po ang lahat when it comes to protecting data and uh, preserving privacy. No? So, for circulars this year, naglabas na rin po kami ng panibagong circular yeah. po. Sorry now that I just thought about it, no? Secretary and the uh, Commissioner. Ano yung, is there a dovetailing of your work with the, with the national ID? Tapos na kasi sa house yun eh. Ano bang role niyong DICT dyan? 
kasi may privacy concerns dyan, merong uh, storage concerns, merong... Uh, is it going to be part of the portal of the, of the DICT? My understanding is that uh, USEC uh, Villarante is giving inputs ah, okay. uh, on the matter of that legislation. Okay. But... Okay. Uh, Sino bang katrabaho niyo doon, Yusek, sa house? Sinong, sinong who's the chair of the, the, the community push? Right now, sir, we have a uh, collaboration with the National Security Advisor who, uh, where this is a uh, <coughs> special concern for them. Hindi kasi yung bill, ano eh. Pinasa na second reading, if I'm not mistaken, yes, sa, ang, ang sa house. So I just, I'm just, I think it's important na nabigay niyo yung inputs niyo and you, they know. Kasi ano yan, babagsak din sa inyo yan eh. At the end of the day, I support the information because I suppose it's not going to be stored physically, di ba? Yes, yes, Your Honor. Um, immediate uh, action, we have 32 agencies issuing out uh, IDs. Hindi kaya nga. That's why, that's why, that's why national, kailangan na talaga ng national ID. Uh, national government portal, i-integrate natin to so that we will come up with a virtual national ID. Virtual muna ho. Common uh, fields, uh, yun. So, uh, going to the national uh, going portal, ito muna yung mga first steps po. Okay. Mr. Chair, si so, uh, Congresswoman Solaragones po yung sa uh, Congress. If I may continue, Mr. Chair, next slide na lang po. Um, ayun po, so yung pag-promote po nitong uh, and uh, may, mayroon bang clickable yan? Actually, in the Pakyo Ho, we already held 369 awareness events no? <laughs> from uh, um, from all over the Philippines po. Nagsasabay din po kami ng Department of ICT. What do you say in that, uh, in that awareness event? What do you say? Uh, sir, yun po ano, we, we came up with, ano, um, we came up with a, uh, what we call the five pillars of compliance. No? So, you tell people na mag-iingat sila pag hindi ko yung po, yung karapatan po nila. There's fishing of information. Yes, sir. Um, I think there's a very low awareness of something like that. Yung po yung recently nga lang po, one thing, isa pong, um, isa pong event, na napakalaking event involving around uh, almost 8,000 nung mga kabataan po natin. Eh, di recently kasama ko ang uh, DICT, Yusek Mwan Ibrahim. Eh, pinaliwanan ko natin sa mga kabataan ano, ano rin karapatan nila at saka how they could uh, protect their self, themselves online. Pag pumunta kayo sa website, uh, Mr. Senator, meron ko kami 30 ways to love yourself online. Meaning how to protect yourself. May konting hugo po yun pag gano, eh, tinan, ano, 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 kinabit na namin sa pag-ibig, parang gano'n. No? Para so, mind-gun. Mind-gun sa mga kabataan. So parang puso lang yan ang inyong personal data. Nakaka-relate naman yun sila. Kami mo nila yung set mo, eh, kami mo ang medyo hirap. Si Sir Rudy mo pinaka-bata ko sa amin. Eh. Kaya, at kaya tayo, alam na alam rin, relate na relate si Secretary Sir Rudy mo sa mga hukot na yan. Next slide po. Yes, sir. Just for the information of uh, the chair, uh, the two offices, Cybersecurity and the Private Commission, in fact, is uh, conducting, continuing caravan throughout the country, informing the people. Maraming bigyan natin ito, mga mga bata, I think in one instance, about 4,000 kagayon di oro attended. You see, I'm informing the people of uh, their privacy and their cybersecurity rights. So, we are making people aware of these programs of government. Secretary, yun po yung mga sample na ginagawa po na, Mr. Chair. Uh, we're holding DPO summits. No? Very important po. Yung first one pillar po namin for compliance is to appoint a data protection officer. So we are now, we have done with the um, government. Nagkaroon yung DPO 2 with banks. DPO 3, ho, uh, DPO 2 with the banks po. DPO 3 with telcos. DPO 4, higher education po. No? Uh, DPO 5, yung BPO sector po, yung pinakasi sa pinakamalaki pong sector din na ang negosyo po ay pagkakasi sa Data Protection okay. Officer okay. Summit okay. po ang ginagawa po natin. And alongside that with the DICT, yun nga po sir, sa Cagayan de Oro, Sambuanga, Butuan, and tuloy-tuloy uh, uh, po ito. No? Uh, ngayon po may DPO Data Protection Officer Summit po kami coming up. Health sector naman po siya. No? By next week, mga private hospitals po will be coming here para maintindihan ang how to uh, comply. No? Next slide po. So, ito po sir, yung formula po natin, uh, Mr. Chair. So, ito po mga sector nito, which we consider also very, very critical. Um, I think worldwide po, tayo nilang nag employ ng ganito, we're really going down the level of sectors and companies. So, 
stone by stone, brick by brick, we'll be trying to build resilience on the, on the ground through companies because kapag resilient yung companies natin, and we'll have resilient sectors. If we have resilient sectors, then we'll have resilient industries, and we have resilient industry, then we have a resilient country. No? So, and very important po sa mata ng nasa labas, lalo na, na ang Pilipinas po ay may turing na responsable no, sa paghawak po ng personal data. Next slide po. So ito sir, yung pong aming uh, simple uh, struktura. At uh, uh, ngayon pa, kapatuloy po namin din na-develop ho. No? Uh, I think evolving ho naman din lahat ito. And if you will next see our last slide po. Eh, um, next slide po. Yan na po yung, yung budget po natin. What's your personal structure now? Because last year, remember, there were only two employees. Ah, uh, ano na po? We were, na kami po, um, na ilabas na po yung aming um, structure, we are allowed to uh, ha get 123. Out of the 123 po, 70 na po ang aming na-fill up. That's 50, uh, 57% of our um, uh, plantilla. So, we still, uh, ano pa rin ho, no? um, short-handed pa rin po, uh, far from the maximum. And, uh, but but we're slowly building up. Uh, it's, it's yeah, yes, tama po yun. From from two, from again, about from three, ho. And uh, we we're trying to get more lawyers, new lawyers, no? Pero again, na yun na pakamaysen pa po ni tong concept na ito. Even po yung mga bago nating abogado, kaya po matruan din ho talaga, no? Kapano po, uh, na, at marami namang na, na excited at na, at na engan yung pong basa po sa privacy commission. Na by ngayon po, this is really now a global movement. We now join um, 120 authorities worldwide in APEC. We are the fifth, 14th country in the APEC na meron na rin pong uh, data privacy law. At patuloy pong um, nakita po natin, developments are, uh, um, well, there are developments in outside APEC. the Philippines. In APEC. APEC, so, so we're the three ahead of us. So, Singapore po, um, uh, also, um, dito po sa atin, uh, Hong Kong, uh, is, uh, also have the, mas advanced po sila sa atin, and, uh, and, uh, and Singapore, and Korea ko, um, na dito sa part po natin, Japan, meron din po okay. sila. So, yun po lang, uh, Mr. Chair, marami pong salamat. Thank you. Uh, before we call on, uh, I just want to highlight it to Mr. Chair that uh, I'm also involving myself here because uh, um, I was actually the one who helped the former Senator Edgardo Angara in crafting both the Data Privacy Law and the Cyber Crime Prevention Act. Uh, we'd like to call on now this is, uh, National Telecommunications Commission. Thank you very much, Rod. Uh, good morning, Roy. Uh, Mr. Chair, Your Honor. Um, this is for the National Telecoms Commission for us. Um, uh, ang sabi po ni uh, Commissioner Liboro, silang bunso, yung TCU naman ang panganay <laughs> sa, sa uh, mga attached agencies. Hindi naman halata. <laughs> <laughs> and regulate uh, the public telecommunications entities, uh, broadcasts, uh, and also uh, mga private uh, radio uh, uh, networks. Uh, yun po yung principal mandate ng commission. Uh, next, please. Uh, the uh, uh, vision of the commission is uh, by year 2020, um, NTC would be a world-class regulatory agency. Uh, the uh, mission is to continually create responsive regulatory environment for a viable, affordable, and reliable and accessible telecommunications infrastructure, information infrastructure and services. Uh, next, please. Uh, this, uh, uh, ito po yung aming uh, target uh, 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 yung, yung, yung accomplishment, no? uh, our, our uh, target for 2016 and what we have done in 2016. Uh, for uh, number of permits, number of licenses, uh, the target was 2.2 million. Uh, we have 
uh, accomplished seven point almost seven point four uh, million. Uh, and the uh, <coughs> number of uh, authorizations, uh, cases disposed, uh, 567, no? more than uh, the target of 360. Uh, administrative cases disposed, 5779, uh, of the target 1670. Uh, for our uh, 2017, uh, uh, the, uh, the First semester accomplishment is uh, for a number of licenses, we have accomplished more than 50% already. Uh, also, a uh, number of channels and a uh, number of authorizations, etc. So, we, we are uh, within a target uh, year runner and we expect to uh, uh, exceed uh, our target uh, uh, for 2017. Next, please. Sir, doon po sa administrative cases, sa inyo po yung reklamo ng, let's say, telco, di ba? Hindi siya happy sa telco service niya, gano'n? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Paano na ano yun? Anong, what can you tell us about that? May mga datos ba tayo dyan? Have any cases been decided in favor of the consumer, for instance, against uh, the telco? Hmm? Uh, well, yes, Your Honor. Uh, of the complaints received, uh, more than 90 percent of cases uh, na, na, na they, they have agreed no? uh, through mediation and less than 10 percent lang napupunta sa legal processes uh, medyo natatagalan po doon because of, uh, of uh, hearings etc uh, meron nang mga na-resolve uh, na uh, cases and uh, uh, some of these cases uh, na 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 ho yung complainant so meron po yung we will submit can you yeah submit the data to us and, and what what's the award or anything so yes. dami nagtitext sa akin ha yung mga tweet ganun tinitweet ako na oh yun bagal ng servisyo nito sabi ko kung sabihin hindi naman ako NTC di ba sana so yun na lang i-tweet niya no uh, uh, yes. we just wait, wait the data, for the data sir yes yes sir so um we have completed the channeling plan for the uh, digital uh, terrestrial television. Uh, so, as, as reported earlier, uh, marami na hong, uh, meron ng mga broadcast companies that are broadcasting uh, digital TV, uh, simulcast with their analog television. Uh, we have also assisted in the implementation of the 911 or 8888 hotlines. Next, please. Uh, our accomplishments into in collection uh, uh, for 2016 uh, we have exceeded our our target uh, by more than 200 million uh, the target was uh, around 4.8 billion and we have collected more than 5.1 billion for 2016 Next, please. Are you allowed to keep the proceeds or um, you have to remit to the National Treasury? Uh, we, we are not allowed to, to keep. So, uh, so all, to all of these are remitted to the National Treasury. So, ito po yan. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, uh, exceeded the, the target by 269 uh, million. Uh, next, please. So, mag how collection? Huh? Uh, the uh, 5 billion. More than 5 billion. Five more than 5.1 billion. 5.1 billion. billion. Yes. Last year, what was it? Uh, last year, 2016. Uh, sorry, 2015. The, the year before previous, rather. 2015. 4.8 billion in 2015. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, our accomplishment as of uh, uh, the uh, first semester. Of, of the year. Can we not use that, uh, Secretary, yung mga proceeds na yun? I-earmark na lang natin for uh, the infrastructure. Yung, sa, yung kinakolekta ng NTC sa mga regulatory fees, why don't we use that to, yun na lang pang natin, let's amend your charter para, or the charter of the NTC para, yun yung gagastos sa mga missionary areas, di ba? Uh, yun po yung hinisip pa namin, even when I was in the private sector. Sana, o. Oh, Para may ready source of funds na may ready source. Kung magagawa ng paraan yun, because sabi ko, 
hirap tayo dito because once madala yan sa general fund ng gobyerno, mahirap pa uh, magpa-approval eh. Because this, I, I guess it's the NTC who really knows the situation, I mean, in, within the agency. They know the situation around the country and uh, san mahinhang signal, di ba? San, I guess by the volume of complaints, malalaman nyo, di ba? Uh, medyo bulat dito, di ba? So, kailangan i-supplement or... Mr. Chair, yeah. which is a very good observation because uh, on the matter of uh, internet speed, binubum ba rin ako ng texts. So, I asked uh, Egay about uh, a week ago, Egay, if they are actually monitoring internet speed throughout the country. Sabi niya, sir, meron naman, kaya lang mabagal because ang equipment namin ay pipitsukin pa yung mga luma pa. But we have a pending uh, case of Parang ano yan? Parang yung Coast Guard, di ba? Uh -huh. Coast Guard natin. Uh -huh. Mas mabilis pa yung buwar ko nung mga nagsasmuggle at saka... <laughs> so sabi niya, may pending kaming procurement sa DBM precisely for that, but this has been pending in DBM since January. What is the amount? Uh, okay. The amount is 45 million po siya. 45 billion? Million. Uh, 45 million. Pending pa yung 45 million. Uh, the procurement is uh, expected to be completed by October. Yun ang sabi ng PS. This year? October this year? Ah, uh, yes. I-approve nila, in other words? Ah, uh, mabibili na ho siya. Ah, mabibili na. Uh, mabibili. Okay. So, hindi na kailangan i-approve? Ah, uh, approve na ho yung uh, budget <laughs> ng 2016. Okay, approve na, bibili na lang. It's with a procurement service. Okay, okay. Ah, uh, well, yung uh, use of uh, some of the income sa DICT, doon po sa approve uh, free Wi-Fi, mayroong provision doon, that uh, the collection for SUF, we can get it to do so free. What about SUF? Uh, uh, spectrum user fees. Spectrum user fees. The collection spectrum user fee is more than 50% of our total collection. Okay. Yes. And how much did we collect for that? Uh, it, it ranges up from 2.5 to 2.7 for the first semester. Sanya, yeah. San binabayad yan? Uh, all users of, of radio spectrum are paying spectrum user fees uh, annually. So, ilan po yan? Um, lahat po silang gumagamit. Medyo, uh, major users of our telcos. Ilan po? Ilan po ang nagbabayad yan? Uh, uh, quality group, bag group. Ilan, 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 lang, oh, ilan lang po? Ilan sila? Ay, marami po siya. Lang marami. po sandaan? Limang daan? Uh, yes, mga users are inspecting. But uh, yung pinakamalaking bayad niyan mm -hmm. comes from these two groups. PLDT group I and see, group. So, uh, as of uh, the first semester of the year, uh, we have collected 38% uh, uh, of our uh, target uh, collection, and we expect uh, by the end of this month, uh, we'll be collecting more than 1 billion, because this is the deadline for the payment of, of uh, supervision regulation fees. So, we expect that by the end of the year, we will be, uh, <coughs> will be uh, uh, the revenue will exceed our target revenue for 2017. Uh, Next, please. <coughs> uh, this is the uh, approved uh, PREXI for the NTC. Uh, this is very similar to the PREXI of uh, CICC and NPC. We have only gas and uh, operations. Uh, uh, next, please. <coughs> the uh, programs of NTC for 2018, we are proposing the acquisition of uh, equipment uh, for uh, benchmarking, for, uh, um, for monitoring uh, radio, the use of radio frequencies, for the uh, acquisition of rapidly deployable communication systems, this is, these are for three uh, regions that are prone to uh, disasters. Acquisition of uh, broadband network measuring equipment. And uh, the last one there is, is uh, the, uh, uh, for the improvement of and rehabilitation of our existing buildings, 20-year-old buildings. Yeah. Uh, next, please. Uh, this is our... Uh, uh, proposed budget for 2017, uh, 453.472 uh, million, uh, 80 million of which are uh, our capital outlay. As, uh, 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 as the result of the 
that the first telecom summit, March 8 and 9 of this year, it was identified that uh, the uh, development of broadband infrastructure uh, required is the responsibility of all the government, the public sector, the homeowners. Does your uh, charter empower you to, or the charter of the DICT empower you to construct the telco infrastructure, meaning cell sites, cell sites, towers? Is that within your uh, or we would have to amend the law to to, to, to allow that? Yeah. The government itself, because the government is authorized to do telecommunication services, and therefore as an incident, so I believe that we can. Oh. The what is the cell site? Uh, 10 million points on cell 10 side. million. So if you are allowed to keep your uh, income or your fees of 5 billion, that's a lot of cell sites uh, nationwide. Makano yun? Uh, divided, 5 billion divided by 10 million. So that's what, 5,000 sites? Ba? Mr. Chair, that's a very good observation. Yeah. Because or 500 sites. Yes. Because so we can help the telcos by building the towers oh. and uh, visit to the telcos. Ah, then you then you make more money also. Yes, yes. Then you recover your costs yes. somehow, no? That's never been suggested. And uh, oh. because it would in effect be a government construction, all our problems about permitting by the telcos, by the LGUs to construct towers will be further facilitated. Yeah. Please proceed, sir. Yes, as in other uh, countries, uh, you know, the uh, responsibility of uh, building the uh, broadband infrastructure is uh, shared by the private sector and the government. And in this, in the Philippines, so as uh, the president approved the national broadband plan, uh, this is uh, we are now looking at uh, uh, the the government uh, investing in the uh, broadband development, and uh, this will speed up the. Uh, the uh, development of uh, broadband nationwide and will uh, greatly improve the, uh, the quality of service that's delivered to the consumers. Uh, I think that this is the last uh, slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you, MTC. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we'd like to uh, present now uh, what is uh, uh, the total proposed budget of the, the whole of the DICT. So, uh, for the DICT wide, the 2018 proposed budget, we're actually requesting for 6.87 billion pesos. Which uh, a little over 90% uh, of uh, that amount would actually be for uh, the DICT office of the secretary or the DICT itself. Next slide, please. Okay, this is uh, the breakdown uh, in terms of uh, uh, PS, uh, MOE, and uh, capital outlay. Can we have the next slide, please? Thank you. If we go back, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, can we go back one slide, please? Okay. Yung makikita natin yung capital outlay for the city office of the secretary. Um, uh, this is mainly for. Uh, locally funded project, uh, yung uh, IGOV uh, at saka yung national uh, free Wi-Fi uh, project namin. That would be all, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to present to your proposed 2018 budget. Thank you uh, for the presentation, Yusek uh, Ibrahim. Can I ask the Secretary, uh, Secretary Rudy and his team, can we come up with it? Is, is that the broadband plan? Meron ba tayong ICT plan for the next decade or so? Is there such, is there such a document? Oh. I, just I just say that because uh, si Putin gave a speech recently. Russia, Russia's leader si Putin. Sabi niya ba, country which controls IT will rule the world, basically. So, I'm curious how, uh, how we, if we have a strategy to kind of compete in that kind of uh, uh, world. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we have the Philippine Digital Strategy, which okay. was formulated uh, in 20... 20 the Aquino administration. Yes, po. Uh, and uh, the current uh, strategy is up to 2016, 2017, 
we are in fact uh, uh, reviewing the accomplishments so that uh, we can uh, craft the success or yeah. plan for this. I don't know, siguro, but we can just put our heads around something like developing a plan for the next 10 years. So the, the world is changing so fast now by the time if we plan for the next 20 years, it's obsolete. Na yun, di ba? Maybe the next 5, 10 years. And maybe may ano tayo, may scaling, meaning uh, if we want to be ambitious or mildly ambitious and, uh, uh, you know, or status quo, be middling, no middling, what, what will happen, di ba? Pero para may ganun tayo, ano, uh, someone has to think of that kind of uh, strategy for, uh, especially for jobs, yung, obs uh, yung obsolescence ng mga, ng BPO, for example, it's a big threat, di ba? Yeah. Uh, if anything I, on that, you think? Or? Yeah, yeah. If I may just comment, uh, uh, although uh, uh, because uh, the ITBPM sector is under my uh, portfolio, we upskilling, uh, important thing upskilling. Yeah. Uh, 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 early this year, we uh, well middle of the, uh, this year, we actually launched the roadmap 2022, uh, accelerate uh, 2022, and uh, that basically tells us uh, how we're going to be working together with the with the the, the industry, uh, government, the industry, and the academe uh, on uh, was this on the achievement of uh, our shared uh, targets, uh, which is 1.8 billion. Was this? Uh, uh, direct employment by the end of uh, 2022. Now, what is significant about this roadmap is the fact that uh, alam na namin kung saan namin gagamitin ng artificial intelligence, alam na namin kung saan namin anong kailangan uh, was this uh, capacity development initiative ang gagawin natin sa mga talent natin in order for them to actually be able to uh, was this do more complex services and leave the, was this the, you know, the, the transactional services to, uh, was this to robots. So, uh, meron mo tayo dyan. And uh, this definitely is something that we need uh, uh, in as far as uh, was this, uh, charting our, was this our uh, uh, ten year uh, journey in terms of uh, really becoming a truly global digital economy. Thank you. And I guess we have to talk to the DTI also, diba? To regarding the merging industries. They're doing roadmaps of various industries. Eh? Yeah. And maybe uh, you can look at them and see what the role of uh, IT is in their in those respective industries. Yeah, no, you know, to, to so I suppose their their models are still quite uh, quite uh, well, well current or maybe past models, no? So. Yeah. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, we're actually confident that uh, was this the, the uh, digital technology that mentioned is actually being uh, was this considered uh, is considered in most of the role must be developed by uh, our counterpart from the trade and industry because the one leading this is actually a former colleague of mine in the IT industry itself, okay. the Noya, uh, Yusek Noya Terado. As in Hora, yeah. 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 I, I want to ask about uh, Mr. Secretary about the third telco player that came out in the uh, what was this the summit business summit I think business submitted about six uh, uh, recommendations to the president and one of them was the third uh, telco player uh, what is your view on that I'm sure someone will ask us about in, that uh, so. in our summit yeah. even on March. Uh, 9, 2017, I said that we need a third significant uh, telco player to uh, put up uh, a decent competition with uh, the two telcos now. Because uh, there is that uh, earlier uh, uh, law passed in 1995, effective March 1995, which in fact uh, allows and uh, abolished uh, monopoly in the country and allow third in even more than three players to come into the country. Also some are saying that the uh, government the government could become the third uh, telco player. But I still uh, want that uh, a big uh, company from abroad with significant experience in money come here to partner with our local companies. To significant experience in money? In, in uh, experience in uh, technology, in technology, and uh, we deep pocket to uh, really compete because, as in the case, say for example, of Globe, it took them about seven years of bleeding financially before they were able to recover. And uh, in 1995, the 
mobile players then allowed to operate were about five or six. But out of that five or six, only uh, three players remained. Who was the five or six? Biantel, Extelcom, so I don't know. Isla, then Isla Com was sold to Globe. There was Piltel, there was Red. Uh, Piltel was red, red. 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 What, what yeah. is that now? There was also the Red. You've been again, you know, frequency? Pure. Uh, um, okay, pure. Okay. Cure. Cure rather. Cure. Because my understanding here, uh, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, even for purposes of internet speed, we need a third player. And we need also a third player, a gateway player, because my understanding here is uh, the bulk of our internet messages comes from abroad. And uh, the presence of only two players is constrictive in the inflow of internet messages into the country, even as somehow it affects the speed of internet. The details of which uh, we can explain to you uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'd appreciate a submission on okay. that, uh, Secretary. Uh, yes, I, I actually, com uh, Commissioner Liel, uh, here, yung NTC has said that the remaining unassigned spectrum would be more than adequate for a third player. Tama ba yun? Well, how much, what's percentage of, let's say, if you do 100%, ilan pa ba yung remaining unassigned? Is it 10%, 15%? Um, this is around 200 plus megahertz, Your Honor. Okay. And, and uh, what, what of the universe, what percentage is that? Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, almost the same as the, almost the same as the two. Um, but you, any remaining unassigned? What, what is the... Um, this is the list. Ano na lang, gawin natin pi. If we can do a pi chart of yes, the... Yes, we, we'll do that. Of the... Spectrum. We'll do that, sir. Uh, we'll do that. Oh, no, but offhand, wh what is, how much is, is with the, the, the PLDT group? How much is with the, the um, Globe group? Uh, sir, Globe and the uh, Smart are, uh, are one-third each, but um, I think uh, a little more than one-third, so the third player can have a, a little less than one-third. So, mga 30 siguro siya. It's like yes, a 35, 35, 30, yes, or something I like that. So, so. Tama. Uh, but that's assuming you will assign it all to a third player, yes, right? Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Hindi ba yung co-contest yun ng mga no. dalawang players? They will say, eh, gusto rin namin may ganun, may party kami dyan, di ba? Mr. Chairman, I made instruction to uh, NPC repeatedly during our meeting that uh, we need to reserve enough frequency to entice a third player to come in. That is why my understanding here is uh, of the 7 megahertz now under the control of the total cost, one third of that total are available and is still with the government. I asked them further if outside of the 700 megahertz there are additional frequencies, and I sure was informed that there is. So I said, reserve that for a third player, but even the third player, if we license them to do business in the country, the frequency though reserved for them, they must only be given frequencies on a need basis and only on a year-by-year -year basis as what happened to PLDT and GLOBE. That way, we will be able to prevent this warehousing or uh, of frequencies. Of frequencies. Uh, there's a government uh, think tank paper uh, which concludes that may late mover disadvantage yung third player and in only a cost insensitive subsidy dependent public firm would be viable as a third player. Have you read that paper of uh, Dr. Patalinghug? Anong, anong comment yun doon? Uh, um, uh, actually, uh, Your Honor, um, the, palugi daw, palugi. Palugi yung, uh, the National Broadband Network, um, because the, the two, the two um, incumbents right now have uh, their own national network which they built on their own UC private funds. So, so that's the most expensive part of the network that uh, Telco has to build. So with the National Broadband Network, which is going to be implemented by the DICT, that would be a big help for the third player, sir. Yun po kasi yung mahal na expense, yung civil works po ng fiber optic National Broadband Network. Okay. Um, I just want to add also, how much do you estimate that the two players have spent already on, on that, that uh, infrastructure? Each, yeah. Wow. At, at least uh, 300 billion each. Wow. Yeah. So a lot of, yeah. Yes, best. So that's why the Secretary mentioned a foreign player would be better positioned or 
Because if a third player to whom uh, we reserve enough frequency would in fact be a significant player, they cannot really compete. As what happened What is the limitation in the law? Uh, don't you have a limitation under law for foreign uh, participation? 40% uh, uh, under that uh, section. They would still have need to find a local uh, counterpart one. here. But di ba pa naman mo yung public service uh, act then you, you already liberalized the industry? Yes, but uh, personally my feeling here is the amendment of that provision in the Constitution must be done also by a the process law. constitutional. Uh, so not, not the law? Not, it, it's uh, something in the law? I have some reservations here, but uh, I can disclose to you why there are reservations. But they said, if we have to amend this, do this again by a, con a proper constitutional amendment. And so as a, you're, you're, you're saying a legal amendment is not sufficient to no, allow the entry I, I, I can tell you why. Uh, 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 it could not be possible if someone asks or questions that. What is the reason? <laughs> the problem here is uh, the concept of public utility cannot, to my mind, be uh, arbitrarily changed as far as its def legal definition is concerned. Because a public utility is, by essence, a public utility. And I am scared that if, say, for example, transportation and telecommunications is declassified as a public utility, although transportation and telecommunications is the reason for the passage of the Public Service Act, the protection granted the consumers by Supreme Court decisions on the concept of public utility may be lost. And uh, in almost all countries, the public utility, foremost in the minds of other countries when you speak of public utilities, telecommunications. You, under the Public Service Act, a ICE plant is a public utility. Yes, yes. Uh, secretary. So, to remove that, you need a... I, 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 I don't. You need a constitutional amendment? Uh, no, no, sir. Because, to my mind, by essence, it is difficult to make a definition which does not capture the essence of what a public utility is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, I think we're uh, more or less done with our uh, questions. Well, cell site density, maybe we can tackle that issue. Have we made improvements in the last years, uh, Commissioner Liang? Uh, actually, sir, uh, for for uh, past two years, the cell site density was around 15,000. But right now it's around uh, 16,500. Uh, slight, slight improvement. Yeah, slight, slight improvement. improvement. So, um, <laughs> is the ideal? Like, if you, you mentioned Tokyo, I remember you mentioned Tokyo during the interpolations. Mm. Ano ba yung ideal dyan? Actually, sir, sure, ano po eh, um, uh, in Vietnam there are 70,000 cell sites. Uh, 85 million people. And, and uh, 85 million people. We have uh, 140 yeah. active sims and we only have... Uh, is Vietnam 16? getting a lot of uh, IT investment? Uh, I know they're getting a lot of manufacturing yes. Actually, po, actually po, um, uh, one thing that we want to mention also is in other countries, it's the government that's putting up the, ah. the network. Actually, in Vietnam, po, uh, the two telcos are both owned by the government. One is owned by the army, the other one is owned by the navy. So both ano po siya. So well, they, they don't have problems with permits, they don't have problems with homeowners associations, and uh, ano po sila, they also spend the uh, public funds, so they don't have a problem with the uh, with the investment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So dito po sa atin, since uh, private so sector. What, what law would they have to amend if we wanted to give you the power to be able to construct the infrastructure? Uh, well, ano po? Uh, Is it charter or the ICT law? Actually, so I, I think yeah. that the ICT would be able to do that as an implementing agency right now. But uh, right now, so we have uh, stopgap measures that we are trying to do. So the ICT, po. the ICT, yes, sir. So the ICT the would have the power to regulatory. The regulatory, right? It's not within their mandate. Oh. I see. Yeah. So um, right now, po. Um, uh, the DICT uh, submitted to the president an executive order, draft executive order, lowering the the time for the LGU permits. It takes ano po, around eight months before an LGU issues a, issues a permit for a cell site. 
So um, and the EO uh, proposes that it should be finished in seven days, seven uh, calendar, seven working days. Ah, but by an EO nine. ordering the kind of limiting local autonomy in a sense, but they on. Is that legally? Uh, I think we also should yeah. put it there. Yeah, but is that legally you know, uh, binding? To my mind, yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, so yeah. another thing that... Uh, uh, tagal na pala natin in-issue yung iyo. <laughs> Why did it take us so long to issue it kung pwede naman pala? Uh, another thing, sir, is uh, yung po sa Homeowners Association, um, the DICT has already uh, <clears throat> recommended to Congress that uh, Telco Infra be, be, be actually... Um, be considered as critical infrastructure and should be allowed inside villages and subdivisions because... Um, there are very, uh, almost all, sir, almost all villages do not allow. Yeah, do not allow. I think they're scared of the cancer. Threat. Yes, sir. But actually, po, uh, the United Nations World Health Organization, the DOH, and uh, many, many, um, many uh, international bodies have said that there is no um, correlation. Po. It's, it's safe for, for, ano po, for... Stop it on by, okay lang, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Ano po, actually po, uh, based on the uh, ICNIRP, yung pong non-ionizing radiation, if mas malayo po sa iyong cell site, mas mag-exert ng effort ang phone mo. So if you're using it, uh, kaya po siya umiinit. Okay. So the nearer you are, uh, the less uh, right, right. radiation that it limits. Right. And uh, yes, yes, sir. For the further information, Mr. Chairman, there is in fact uh, a Court of Appeals ruling on the issue of whether uh, uh, mobile telecommunication services produces dangerous radiation okay. because the health aspect of it was also discussed during the court hearing and the court of appeal says when did that no, decision no come out uh, uh, I, 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 we can retrieve that yes, already, is it on appeal now in the supreme I court i think it's already final it's final the decision ah, okay we appreciate the uh, uh, copy of that no? and and so ano po um well people you ask me if it's okay near my house Actually, kasi sir, there's a new technology now that yeah. you don't put up a monstrous... Uh, okay. Uh, mas maliit siya. Mas maliit na po siya. Parang sa, ano na lang po, sa mga poste ng ilaw na lang po. No maliit. kidding, huh? Yeah, it's uh, ore gas. Yeah. Um, ano po, pinayagan po siya sa Bas Marinas Village. So right, right. That's one of the pilot areas. the... Yes, what is that called? Uh, ore gas po. Ano what does ore gas uh, stand for? Ha? Distributed antenna. Distributed antenna. Sir. So it's, it, uh, it acts like a... Like a cell site, or or it just moves the signal along. Parang ano lang siya. It acts as a cell site, but at a smaller power. Smaller power. So you have more. It's less dense than villages, then. So the rate is also lower. Okay. That means it's not an eyesore to the area. I see. I see. It's not an eyesore, kaya po kung paig naman po. Kano ang cost nung yung or or dust or dust? It's it's. I'm not so sure, sir. But the telcos are willing to spend for it because ano po yon mas acceptable po sa mga villages. So. They're talking to the villagers right now. Another thing, sir, is uh, there's a department order issued by the DPWH na bawal po ang, criti ang, ang fiber optics sa, sa national road. So, bawal. yes, sir. Right of way po, inalis po. Because pag nagkakaroon po ng, uh, what's this, disasters, they have a hard time fixing the road I because see. of the... But ano po, uh, we're in the process of talking to the DPWH to amend the AO. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. And, sir, lastly po, um, during the past... Ten years, there has been an influx of uh, condominium residential units and uh, commercial buildings. So, hindi po kasi sir na abot ng signal yung mga upper floors. But it's uh, hindi po part ng uh, building code yun po ng uh, paglagay ng in-building solution. So we already submitted our recommendation to the DPWH. They are in charge of uh, amending the building code with the with the we Senate. Need we need to amend the law. Yes, sir. Uh, po, to include po uh, in in-building solutions for uh, commercial and residential buildings. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh -huh. What would that require? It would require uh, an order type of uh, structure on the, on the building? Um, actually, sir, it would be uh, yung po mga small structures, uh, pic pico cells, inside the per floor po yun. Dinisibit po sa per floor. So it's not, it's not also an eyesore, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. The two telcos have uh, uh, they came up with a study that we need at least 67,000 to improve their uh, quality of cell service. Size. Additional cell size. Yes, uh, total, sir. 67, total, total. so minus what we have now, about uh, 16. So we need uh, uh, something like uh, 50,000. I don't know. I, I, it's just an opinion of the chair, and the chair could be mistaken. But uh, I think there has to be some cost sharing here if we really want to. Uh, if you wait for the private sector, then 
I'll take uh, yes, sir, in fact, from here to eternity. <laughs> yes, sir, the secretary has connectivity, uh, Yes, sir. Well, the secretary came up with uh, uh, tower sharing. In other words, uh, mm. um, globe towers can a smart can go. And of course, the, the one that was uh, mentioned by Secretary that the government can come up with their own uh, tower. Is there a map which uh, sets forth the places where they are needed? The underserved areas? Uh, yeah. Where would those... Uh, where would those... Uh, uh, that's about 50,000 more cell sites. Where would they be? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, basically, uh, we, they will go to the underserved and unserved uh, areas. Actual, actual. Okay. Uh, 40 percent po ito. The uh, actual locations. Ho. Yung actual ah, okay. locations po. Uh, well, if we have to define it by region, and more or less the best uh, um, data or survey that we have so far is the one made by uh, Comelec. Okay. When they, uh, Can I get a copy of that? Oh. I'll, 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 I'll do that to you. Sige po. Nakaset for two doon? Yung saan yung mal ma malakas ang signal? Uh, na. Actually, totoo yun. Uh, kung saan walang signal, kung saan may mga two bars ka lang, yeah. uh, that is in their uh, data, Your Honor. Well, well, I'll get, give you a copy. I would expect there's a particular challenge for the Philippines because of the topography also, di ba? That's kung true. Sa, uh, and of course, uh, as far as the telcos concerned, Yung viability or yung economic viability yeah, is also... Yeah. That's why that's a part the government has to step in talaga. Otherwise, uh, if we leave it to the free market, wala, wala, wala mangyayari sa atin, di ba? Okay, uh, any other points? Uh, thank you for the presentation. Yeah. I'd like to thank the Secretary and his uh, uh, team for uh, at NTC, NPC, and uh, CICC. Maraming salamat po, Secretary. We'll endorse your uh, budget favorably. Thank you. Salamat.